All right, so in a previous tutorial, we looked at how to take PowerPoint slides and save those as images. So if we uh, come back to PowerPoint, uh, we had this presentation. We're going to assume that this is the presentation that I want to convert into an e-learning course. Now, in this case, where it's all static content, I don't have any interactivity to it. Uh, and so instead of copying and pasting that into a different format, what we did is we just saved the slides out as images, and then we can bring those images into Rye. So I'm going to show you a few different things uh, that you can do. So let's look at our uh, Rise course right here. I'm going to show you an example. So we're going to insert PowerPoint as the example that we have. And let's preview this, and then I'll talk t talk through what we see, and then uh, give you some ideas. Uh, so in this case, we're going to look at working uh, with this as images. Uh, you can see I can save as a video as well. We'll do that in a different tutorial, but uh, we're going to look at uh, inserting the images stacked. So uh, once you save the PowerPoint images, uh, you can just bring them in. Uh, to your rise course like this and so each slide essentially would be an image and then I can just kind of go through it this way so it looks really elegant now if I wanted to make it a little bit more interactive and kind of have a next button concept we can do that I'll show you how to do that here in just a second uh, so we can uh, just scroll through images this way that's an easy way to take uh, what you have without having to copy and paste to save them as images and then bring the images in uh, if you needed to put some audio on the slides, now these aren't going to be able to synchronize, so you can't synchronize animations. That's where you might want to work with the video. Uh, but in this case, we can insert an image, and then we can insert an audio track underneath it. So if you wanted to explain some content on the slide, uh, you could do that. And so what we would do here is we uh, have our images. So this is a few different blocks. I put a little divider here with a number on it so it's a little easier to see. So it's like number one and then I've got my image and then underneath that I added an audio track so then when I click through this the audio uh, would play. So uh, we would have that there and then I would scroll down and there's my second block and, and some audio and then here's my third block uh, with some audio as well. And um, so that's another way to do that. So you could add just static images. People can read the slides. Uh, if you did want them to listen to some narration, uh, you can just insert the narration uh, down here. Another way to make it a little bit more interactive is you can insert the images into a single image carousel. So in a sense, you kind of have like a little mini uh, presentation just by clicking uh, through that. And then the other option, if you want to make it interactive, is I use the timeline interaction, and the timeline allows me to insert an image and an audio track. So it's a little bit different. So it's got a little bit more of an interactive structure to it. I've got my audio track up here, and then I have my slide. You know, I can click and view the slide in more detail, and then I can listen to the audio. And that's just using uh, the timeline interaction. Uh, to do that. And you could probably use the process interaction as well if you wanted to. So you've got a few things you could do. You just insert static images. You can insert some static images with audio tracks underneath the image. Uh, you can insert uh, image is make it a little bit interactive with like a little uh, carousel interaction and navigate through those uh, and then the other one is you could use some of the other interactions. This one we're using a timeline interaction. So let's go ahead and see how we would build this. So the first thing, uh, we're going to look at the images stacked. Uh, right now the image is stacked. It's just a series of images and all I'd really need to do is insert a block uh, which we'll do here. Uh, we just insert an image block and then you can see there's the image and then all I really need to do is go to edit and then I would uh, upload my own image and just replace the image from here if I want to do that. Now if you want to make it interactive, uh, what you could do is you could add these dividers. So I'm going to go ahead and right between the blocks you'll see the little plus icon. So when I click on that I can insert a divider. So we're going to do a divider block and we'll choose continue. And then what that does, let's go ahead and add a couple more. So we'll duplicate this and then I'm just going to send this below and we'll duplicate this one more time and I'm going to send this below. So you can see how easy that is to work with in Rise. What's nice about these dividers is it kind of works like a little interactive slideshow. So I get my slide, get my content here, I hit continue, 
it continues. I, I really like that's a really nice way to stop them from uh, clicking through and then you can uh, add your content in there. So the dividers uh, make it a little bit uh, more interactive. Uh, the other thing we were looking at, if we come backwards here, is uh, inserting an image with audio. Kind of works the same way. The only difference is we're adding audio. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, we'll just need to insert an image. And again, we would find our image. We just go to edit here and then we'd replace the image with our slide image. And then the other thing we would do is we want to insert an audio track. So that's going to go to the all blocks. It's going to open up the block library which we see here and that's multimedia. So we click on multimedia and then you can see uh, we have an audio track and so you can insert the audio track. Now if you wanted to stylize this so it looks a certain way um, you could do that. You can see up here what I did is I added the numbering divider. Uh, I added a color background and so you can see it all looks kind of cohesive. So if we preview this I can kind of see this distinction between the slides. So you can see it's like a darker gray and then a little bit lighter and then darker again. If you wanted to do something like that and you kind of created a structure that worked for you, uh, for example, you could do the coloring. Uh, you could come into these image blocks. If we go to edit, uh, I'm going to go to settings. And let's say I want to pull up this audio block. I want to pull it up closer. So on the image block on the bottom padding, I'm just going to exaggerate this. We'll do no padding. And you can see that pulls it in tighter. And then I can do the same thing on the audio block here. I'm going to go to edit. And on the audio block settings, I'm going to go to top padding. And we'll just make it no padding. And it pulls it in really tight. So now when I preview this, that audio is going to be a little bit closer to the slide. And so you can see it looks like it belongs there a little bit better probably than this, which is a little bit more uh, separated. So uh, that's a nice way to add the audio track in there. So let's say you did that, you really like that, and you don't want to have to do that every time you insert an audio track. This is one of the nice things about uh, Rise is I'm going to go to Edit. And I can save this as this whole block structure here as a template. So I'm just going to click on one of these black plus icons. I'm going to go to block templates and I'm going to create a new template. So a new block template and what I'm going to do is select my number. So select that. I'm going to select my slide and I'm going to select or my image and I'm going to select my audio track. So all the padding, the coloring and everything's uh, already built for that. So I'm going to save this as a template. Uh, let's just say we're going to call this my uh, slideshow template here. I'm not going to share it with my team, but if you had a Teams account you could do that. We'll hit save and now I have that template. So the next time I want to insert a slide, I don't have to do everything from scratch. So let's go ahead and delete this. Let's insert one from, slide, from, from the template. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on all blocks and I'm going to come down here to the block template and I should see the one I just inserted. So let's go ahead and insert that. And you can see it inserted the entire structure. So all I have to do now is swap out my images right here. And then I can come into my audio block and I can upload my audio if I want to do that or record audio uh, from scratch. So that makes it easy. I don't have to rebuild everything. So the block templates uh, work really well for that. Um, let's see what else we had here. So we also had the image carousel or the timeline interactions. Those are pretty simple. We'll go to edit. Uh, the image carousel, all you need to do is go into the all blocks and we're going to go to gallery and we have an image carousel here. So I'm going to select that and what's nice about this is we just have to do a batch import. So I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to add images. Go to Upload Image. Here are the slides that we were using. So we're going to go ahead and select all these slides. So we have 19. Hit Open. And you can see they come in as a batch. And uh, depending on how fast your internet is, uh, they'll get uploaded and uh, work really well in there. So um, that's how that works. So then you'd end up having a batch. I probably should have only uh, stuck with a couple, uh, but you could see uh, that they're being uploaded here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel 
and um, we'll see what we have. So you can see here, oops, they're not finished, but you can see how they're uploaded in here and you can see how that carousel interaction works. Uh, if you want to add captions and whatnot, you can do that. Uh, so that's working with a carousel interaction. If you want a different type of interaction, uh, just go to All Blocks and then you can go to Interactive Options here and then you can see there's some different ones. I kind of like the timeline interaction. So if we scroll down here, oops, I scrolled past it. Here's the timeline interaction. The timeline is designed to be a timeline. Um, but I can just use it as a series of PowerPoints that are kind of stacked vertically. So all I need to do is go into my uh, edit options and then you can see I'm going to leave the date blank. I'm going to leave the title blank. I'm going to get rid of the text because that's all going to be on the image. So I'm going to insert a picture here. So I'll upload media. There's one of our slides. Let's go ahead and insert that there. So you can see uh, we've got our slide. If I wanted to record audio, we'll just go ahead and do a couple seconds of audio and then you can see how that works. Let's just do one more. So again I'm going to delete the text because I'm going to assume my slides already have text on there. If I wanted to get rid of the title in the PowerPoint slides I can then put title in one of these blocks here. Let's actually see what this looks like. So this is the date title so you'll see what it would look like. And then uh, let's get rid of the text here and we're going to insert media. Let's go ahead and put the second slide in there. Well, put this one. And then uh, if we had audio we would record that. Let's just go ahead record a couple seconds. And let's do one more and we'll use the event title so we can see what that looks like. So I'm going to come down here, click on add new content. Here we're going to do event title so we can see uh, what the difference is. And uh, we're going to insert a picture, upload media, Let's go ahead and insert this one here. And then again if we had audio uh, we can go ahead and record a couple seconds of audio. So now we have a simple interaction. So here we have a slide with audio. We didn't use any of this content. Here we're using the date title to see what that looks like and here we're going to use the event title. So let's go ahead and close this and preview it and see what it looks like. So you can see as we look at it uh, well, I guess I should have clicked here. So here's my timeline interaction. I've got my audio track and this is using nothing uh, from there except for the image. So I'm assuming I have my title and everything on the slides. Uh, here I can see I have my, uh, this is the date title and then here's the event title. So you can see they look a little bit different in terms of their formatting. Uh, one thing you might want to consider if you're going to use the titles in the timeline is to get rid of the titling in the slide. So that would actually open up more real estate uh, on your slide and you could add more content or massage your content in a different way uh, and then just add your titles into the timeline interaction. But I think it looks really nice, right? Looks good, looks clean and it's a nice little interaction. And you could do the same thing with some of the other interactions. So the key thing is you've got PowerPoint content you don't want to export that um, or copy and paste it into different formats. So why not just save the PowerPoint file as an image or slides as images and then you can insert those images and as you can see there's all sorts of ways uh, that you can use those images uh, to benefit you and, and build a nice a clean and, and, and even interactive e-learning course.